Hello and welcome back to Algebra. We're in Chapter 6, Section 3, Properties of Radicals. All right, a radical expression with index n is in simplest form. When no radicands, radicand is what's underneath the square root, or the, the radical sign, have perfect n powers as factor. So nth powers. So if it's a square root, you can't have a square underneath it. So uh, 5 is under a square root here. It's not a, a square or perfect square, so that is in simplest form. Same with this expression here. 3 is not a perfect square. Here, under this radical, and this is a square root, 49 is a perfect square, so I can simplify that. x to the third is x squared times x, so I could still simplify that. Okay, here's another example. 36 is 6 squared, so that's not in simplest form. No radicands contain fractions, so there can't be a fraction underneath the radical sign. Notice that here there is a fraction, but it's not underneath the radical sign. Only the 3 is under the radical. However, this right here has a fraction underneath the radical. No radicals appear in the denominator of a fraction. All right, this is okay because the fraction is in the numerator. This is not okay because there is a radical in the denominator. Did I say fraction? The radical appears in the numerator over here. Okay, and another example of not okay, not simplified. Can't have that radical down here in the denominator. All right, uh, product property of square roots. If you have a square root like this, if you have a, a product underneath a radical, you can also split that up. The square root of a product equals the product of the square roots of those factors. And this is useful because now I can simplify the 9, the square root of 9 is 3, and then the 5 just stays underneath the radical sign like this. All right, so if I want to simplify this, I can break 108 up. Um, you can either keep dividing it, you can say, well, 108, um, I don't know what goes into 108, so divided by 2, you get 2 times 54. Okay, well, um, 54 is not a square, neither is 2, so we can keep going. That's 2 times 2 time, times 27. All right, and then we have 2 times 2 times 3 times 9, and that's 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. All right, now I can split that up. 2 times 2, I could put that under one radical, say 2 times 2, or 4, square root of 4 is 2. And then times 3 times 3, that's 9, square root of 9 is 3, and then times radical 3. Now this is a bit of extra work, but that's how how you can solve this, and then you get 6 radical 3. Now up here, if you'd seen that this is 36 times 3, then you could have just split that part up. 36 times radical 3, and then you would have also gotten 6 radical 3. So there's a couple ways to split this up. If you see that you've got two factors that makes a perfect square, you can pull those out. 3 times 3 gets you 3. If you see you have two factors there, you get the 2. All right, so here I can split this up into 9, and then x to the third is also x squared times x. Here's a square. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of x squared is x. And then we have 1x left under the radical. All right, square root of a quotient equals the quotient of the square roots of those two. So I can split that up. And again, this is useful because now I can simplify the denominator since we can't have radicals in the denominator. All right, so I'm going to do that same thing here. I've got 15 over radical 64. Now 64 is a perfect square, so I can square root that, and then I keep the radical 15 up here. Split this up, 81 over radical x squared. Now I can do the square root for each of these. That's 9 over x. 
Okay, if I have a cube root, uh, you should at least know a few of these cube roots. There are only four cube roots under 100, and obviously one cubed is still one, so you only need to know these three under 100. Uh, and then five cubed is 125. So be familiar with these three. Notice that this is not one of those, so maybe I can split this up. The cube root of, and this is negative 64, times 2. All right, and negative 64 is a cube, so I can take that out. That's negative 4 cubed, and then cube root of 2. All right, here we know 125 is 5 cubed, so take that out. We can split that up into cube root of 125. And then the cube root of, I can split this one up into x to the third times x to the third times x. Okay, then here we have 5, x to the third is x times x, and then we have an x left under the cube root. So that gets me 5x squared times the cube, oh, times the cube root of x. All right, and here, split this up into cube root of y over the cube root of 216. And we're left with a cube root of y in the numerator. Cube root of 216 is 6. Okay, rationalizing the denominator. Now, if you have a radical in the denominator, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply the whole thing by 1. Now, that's not going to change this at all, right? If you multiply by 1, anything times 1 is itself. Well, I could have any fraction, like 2 over 2. That's 1. So if I multiply this by 2 over 2, I'm not changing it. All right? But multiplying it by 2 over 2 isn't going to help me. I'm going to multiply it by something that's going to cancel out this radical. Right? If I multiply that by radical 3, then that's squared, and that cancels out the square root. I have to put the same thing on top. That way, these radicals cancel out. And... That gets me 2 radical 3 over 3, because this right here is radical 3 times 3, which is square root of 9, and that is 3. That's how we get this. Okay, same deal here. We're going to multiply by whatever is in the denominator, and that cancels out the square roots, and then up here, I can put these under the same, and that gets me 5 times 3, which is 15. And, and there we have rationalized the denominator. Now, conjugates are basically expressions that look almost identical, except their sign in between them are opposites. So, a conjugate here for 5 plus radical 2 would be 5 minus radical 2. Now, the reason we're doing this is because if we multiply a plus b times a minus b, that results in a squared minus b squared. And the square is going to cancel out that square root. Okay, so multiply this. This is We'll use the distributive property, so we're going to do 3 times 5 and 3 times radical 2. So that gives me 15 minus 3 radical 2. And then down here, since I'm using conjugates, I'm going to get a squared, which is 5 squared, plus b squared, which is radical 2 squared. And that gets me 25 minus radical 4, or radical 2 squared is also just 2. And then subtract those, I get 23. And there we go, rationalized using conjugates. All right, here's a real-life problem. The distance that you can see to the horizon is given in this formula, where h is how far you are above the water. Now, this height here is 5, so we'll put 5 in there. 3 times 5 over 2, and that gets me 15 over 2. Now, I have a fraction in the radicand. can't have that, so... I'm going to split this up using the quotient property, and then we will rationalize the denominator. This cancels out the radical down here, leaves me with 2, 
and then 15 times 2 is 30. Now, this is an impractical answer for this question because they're asking you how far can you see. And if you say, well, I can see radical 30 over 2. Okay, that's, that's not practical in the context of this question. So we will change this for this instance to a decimal, and that's about 2.74 miles. Uh, is how far you can see if your eye level is 5 feet above the water. Okay, here we have the Parthenon. It is built using the golden ratio where length to width is 1 plus radical 5 to 2. Now remember this was length and this was width. Okay, so the length will use 31 to width would be the height here. Now we're going to cross multiply to solve this proportion, so that gives me h times 1 plus radical 5 over 2 is equal to, oh, sorry, I meant to cross multiply here. That 2 goes over here times 2. Now I want to divide by 1 plus radical 5 to get rid of that because I want to get the h by itself. 1 plus radical 5. So this expression represents h. So 62 over 1 plus radical 5. But this is impractical, or it's not simplified, so I have to rationalize the denominator. We're going to do that using conjugates. So I'm going to use the opposite sign here, 1 minus radical 5. So I'm going to do the same thing on top. 1 minus radical 5. And this gives me the square of each. So 1 squared is 1. Radical 5 squared is 5. That'll give me negative 4 in the denominator. And then 62 times 1 is 62. Minus radical 5 times 62 is 62 radical 5. Then we type that puppy into our calculator and we get approximately um 19.16 so the height is approximately 19.16 meters all right performing operations with radicals radicals act a lot like uh, variables so if you have like terms like 6x plus 2x since they have the same variable they are like terms we can add those and that gets me 8x in the same way, I can add like radicals, so they have the same index and the same radicand. So 6 radical x plus 2 radical x is 8 radical x. All right, using this, we're going to do example b here. We'll use a distributive property first. So 5 times 3 is 15n. 5 times negative 75 is negative 375n. Oh, now there's not much I can do here yet because this is not the same expression in the radicand, but I can factor out a 5 here. Okay, sometimes it helps to look at the other one and see, well, somehow can I make this 15n? Yes, I can if I factor out a 5. That's 5 times 15n. So now I have 1 times 15n minus 5 times 15n, that gets me negative 4 times 15n. All right. All right, to simplify this, we're going to use a few properties here. 30 is also 3 times 10. So I'll have 12 and then radical 10 times radical 3. The radical 10 can cancel out. Boom, boom. 12 and 3 can be simplified. Divide each of these by 3. You get 1 here, 4 there. So now we have 1 over 4 radical 3. We want to get rid of the radical 3, so we're going to multiply by radical 3 on top and on bottom. And then we have radical 3 over, this cancels out, 4 times 3 gets me 12. Boom. There you have it. Good times. Check in again next time for another fun lesson.